Hi, everybody. It's Jay, and I am back in the booth with you for another sneak peek video preview for this week's new release here on Say With Jay. Our new release this week is Just a Cowboy's Love Song. It's book 10 in Jesse Gusman's Fly Boys of Sweetbriar Ranch, Sweet Romance series. And I'll have more about the story and a live preview reading for you in just a bit. But I have a couple of orders of business to take care of first. The first, if you've done a really deep dive on this YouTube channel, you may have found a couple of non-audiobook videos of me feeding some little critters from my backyard. As I've mentioned before, I've been kind of working as a hobby to gather a minion army. Um, and some of you had asked, since I've gotten a new dog, a Labrador Retriever mix named Buddy, if that has put a dent in my minion recruitment. Well, um, for what it's worth, retrievers that are used as hunting dogs, and trust me, Buddy is 100% not, they're generally used to bringing back dead things, which, for the most part, don't move. Squirrels and chipmunks move, and pretty quickly. Um, and as such, Buddy's success at trying to catch any of them has been not at all. I think at this point, they're just kind of taunting him and teasing him, just playing with him, I think. But be that as it may, uh, I thought this would be a good opportunity to show you that my minion recruitment is still in full force. I took these videos this morning. And, you know, we'll, we'll see what kind of nefarious hijinks we can get up to. Okay, honestly, I wanted an excuse to show cute chipmunk videos and to say the word hijinks. Moving on. The second order of business. Recently, in Jesse's Facebook reader chat group, which, if you haven't joined, you should at this address, uh, Jesse, during her Kerfel Shenanalooza event, held a recipe contest, and of which I was fortunate to be able to judge. Jesse has decided to use the winner of that recipe contest, Jonna Niles, to use both Jonna and her recipe in just a cowboy's love song. Now, as you well know, when Jessie has a recipe in her books, I've been making it for you here in a segment we like to call Cooking with Jay. Today is going to be no different, and I am very happy to have the opportunity to make Jonna's Pork Colorado. Now, before we get into it, as always, don't worry about trying to copy down the ingredients in real time. I'll include them in the description of the video down below. You may have to hit show all or whatever it says to see the full description. But let's go ahead and get started making Jonna's Pork Colorado. You're going to need two pounds of pork stew meat. When I went to the grocery store, they didn't have any stew meat out, so I wound up getting a two-pound pork tenderloin. You're going to need one and a half tablespoons of minced garlic. You're going to need three stalks of celery, chopped, half of a sweet onion, also chopped. You're going to need two cans of fire-roasted diced tomatoes, half a can of mild roasted green chilies. You're also going to need half a bag of frozen corn. And then for spices, you're going to need one and a half teaspoons of chili powder, two teaspoons of ground cumin, one and a half teaspoons of garlic powder, and one teaspoon of salt. Also, not pictured here, but at the end of the cook, you're going to need two tablespoons of all-purpose flour 
and some cold water. So again, as I said, you're going to need to chop your onion and your celery. Next, if you're not using stew meat that is already chopped, you may want to roughly cut your meat into pieces. You 100% don't need to cut it into as small a pieces as I'm doing here. When you cook this in the crock pot, it is going to be so fork tender. It is going to just fall apart when you stir it. So this is kind of wasted effort. I would cut it into some good sized chunks just to let more of that surface area be exposed to all these wonderful flavors that we're going to add. Next, we're going to add our pork to our crock pot. On top of that, you want to add your onions and your celery and your minced garlic. On top of that, you're going to want to take your spices, sprinkle those spices over top of your celery, onions, and garlic. Then you're going to add your two cans of tomatoes, undrained, followed by your half can of chilies. Now, I like chilies a lot, so I'm going to go ahead and use the whole can. If they're mild chilies especially, it's not going to add any heat to the dish. But again, undrained. Then cover the crock pot and cook on low for 8 to 10 hours or high for 4 to 5. One half hour before serving, mix two tablespoons of flour with a little bit of cold water. The goal here is to make a roux or a slurry that you're going to add that's going to serve as a thickener to the juices that are in the crock pot now. Add your corn and give it all a good stir and let it cook for 30 more minutes. And ladies and gentlemen, there you have it. Jana's Pork Colorado. You can serve it with flour tortillas, or I imagine tortilla chips would be good, with some sour cream and maybe some fresh cilantro like I've got here, a squeeze of lime juice, or maybe some salsa. Whatever you like. It is fantastic, and it might just be even better the next day, should you have any leftovers, which I promise is not going to be a guarantee. Well, there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you make Jana's Pork Colorado. I hope you'll try it out, and if you do, let us know how it goes in the comments. All right, now let's talk a bit about Just a Cowboy's Love Song. Just a Cowboy's Love Song is the story of Jones Dunn. Jones is a country singer who has been a member of a band and a songwriter and backup singer for his superstar sister. His sister, however, dies in a tragic plane crash. And for the last year, he has been raising her daughter, 12 year old. Florence, and he has come to Sweetwater, North Dakota, to finish out his sister's dream of building a ranch there. In the meantime, while the ranch is being finished, he rents a duplex next door to Mally Woods. Now, Mally, you may not know her name, but you know her daughter, Tony. Yes, Tony and her friends Merritt and Sorrel have been involved in matchmaking activities in many of the books in this series, and most recently have been trying very unsuccessfully, to put it mildly, to find a husband for Tony's mom, Mally. Well, when Jones moves next door, Tony decides to try the direct approach. Now, I'm not going to spoil any more of the book, but here is a live reading of the opening scene of Just a Cowboy's Love Song. I hope you like it, and then you'll come back this Friday for the full release here 
on Say With Jay. Jones hurried down the street, casting a quick glance behind him. Thankfully, he'd left his niece, Florence, at home in the duplex they'd just rented in Sweetwater, North Dakota. Because the cow was gaining on him. His horns, at least two feet long on each side of his head, were enough to scare anyone, even someone who worked out regularly as he did. He didn't quite break into a run, but he lengthened his stride. He didn't particularly want to be seen running from a cow. He managed to take another ten strides or so before he shot another glance over his shoulder. Somehow, even though the cow didn't look like it was working hard at all, it had managed to gain on him. He could almost feel the hot breath on the backs of his arms. Sweat broke out on his brow, and his heart pounded like he'd been jogging for six miles instead of walking for two blocks. He tucked the takeout that he'd gotten from the diner in town up under his arm. He had no groceries in the house, and the takeout was all he had to feed his niece. He really didn't think this cow wanted the takeout. He was leaning more toward the idea that the cow wanted him. Still, he hoped both the takeout and himself would manage to make it to the duplex before the cow. What did cows do? Did they eat people? Or was he just going to grind him into a messy pulp with his horns? He'd seen enough bull riding to know horns were dangerous. Speaking of, something brushed the back of his arm, and he would have forgotten his good intentions and broken into a dead sprint, since his house was only two blocks away. Except he noticed a young girl walking toward him. She didn't seem the slightest bit afraid of this cow in front of her, and was actually looking at Jones like there might be something wrong with him. She didn't stop didn't turn, and was she talking to the cow? Billy, what are you doing following someone down the sidewalk? You have no manners. The girl was tall, but she looked to be around the same age as Florence, his niece. He took a deep breath, and maybe he should have stopped, or maybe he shouldn't have tried to keep one eye on the girl and one eye on the cow. Whatever it was, he didn't see the crack in the sidewalk and tripped over it. He went down, dropping the takeout and landing on top of it. A jolt of pain went up through his hip, and his elbow scraped on the cement. It was embarrassing. He was known as being quite athletic. Despite the fact that he was a musician by trade, he hit the gym regularly and looked like it. It was a blow to his pride to be looking up at the girl from his inglorious position on the sidewalk. But fear was more like a dagger to his heart as the cow stopped, standing directly over him, his horns looking even bigger from that angle. Are you okay? The girl said, coming over and putting one hand on the cow's forehead, pushing. The cow, acting all docile now that the girl was a witness to their interactions, backed up so that he was able to lower his head and put his nose directly in front of Joan's nose. He wasn't sure whether that was an improvement or not, particularly if this cow was hungry and intended to eat him. He supposed he would rather the beast start at his head. It would make his demise faster and less painful. Billy, stop being a brat. Back up and let the man up. The girl, her tone soft, still sounded irritated. This is no way to welcome people to town. You're going to scare them away instead of keeping them around. Thanks, he said as the cow backed up even farther, making Jones feel like he could get up. Even though he scooted backward a little bit before he did, so he didn't have to turn his back on the beast. Billy is not usually like this the girl said, shaking her head. He wanted to say, what, does he typically eat people feet first? But he didn't. He doesn't usually chase people down, he said instead. Nah, he loves to be petted, 
but he doesn't usually target people on the sidewalk. Jones looked down at his ruined takeout. He had been hoping to be able to get back to his duplex and take it easy for the rest of the day. He supposed that idea was out of the question. Hi, this is Jay, and thanks for listening. If you're ready for another great audiobook, here's one we think you might like. Or check out the playlist with all our latest releases. Don't forget to subscribe to Say With Jay, give this video a thumbs up, and tell us what you liked in the comments.